What is it and why is it so glamorous and seductive? Arts 21 meets the philosopher Terry Eagleton, who believes evil isn't just a religious construct, but rather a real phenomenon. For me, evil is incomprehensible. I think evil is rather sexy. True evil is something we have to fight against. But what is it exactly, evil? What is the true face of evil? Is evil something that's in all of us? The unfathomable darkness that both attracts and repels us. This man ought to know, Terry Eagleton, a professor of literature and one of Europe's most influential intellectuals. He's now published a book on the subject. Mr. Eagleton, in your book, you talk about the moment you told your son that you're writing about the evil, and his first reaction was wicked. So what's so fascinating about the evil? So that's partly because um, evil became attractive and seductive and uh, glamorous at, at about the same time that good became boring. Prudence, chastity. Now, of course, many of these virtues are very important, but it's hard to make great literature, great art out of them. And this is one of many reasons why I think we get the rise of a kind of literature of evil. You know, It's also the case with our present day interest in horror movies. The struggle between good and evil, an idea that's had us under its spell for many centuries and one that has deep roots in many religions. God versus the devil. In Christianity, history begins when Eve is seduced by evil and then banished from paradise. Humanity falls into a state of sin and is left to seek redemption through prayer and repentance. In Christianity, accepting the evil within us is not an option. I think this is absolute nonsense, you know, that kind of demonic power is actually part of all of us. To be a human subject is to be imperfect unfinished to, you know, we're never complete. That's part of our subjectivity. Now, we, we usually find some way of living with that. The unimaginable essence of barbarity was displayed under National Socialism, the murder of six million Jews, an ideology of absolute contempt for human life promulgated by the masses. Adolf Hitler as the symbol of horror, as evil personified. Or is true evil still something beyond human comprehension? I, I think people say evil is beyond comprehension partly because of this, I, this, this point that it doesn't seem to have a practical function. It doesn't, I mean, it seems to be done, to use a theological term, just for the hell of it. Yeah? Um, and that is hard to understand. It's easy enough to understand why somebody murders somebody else in a fit of rage. It's much harder to understand why somebody might take a deliberate kind of obscene enjoyment in dismembering people just for the sake of it. Yeah. I don't think we should say, well, you know, evil is beyond our comprehension, we can say nothing about it. For one thing, I think, um, I think psychoanalysis might give us some ideas as to what's going on there. <laughs> For Eagleton, the idea of evil is always a reflection of our deepest fears. Today, radical Islam occupies the position of arch enemy. The axis of evil is a political call to arms. And the face of that evil? Osama bin Laden. His recent killing was celebrated by many as both triumph and redemption. The victory of good over evil, or so we believe. Evil is usually the other, isn't it? The difference between good and evil is usually, would you believe it? I'm good and you're evil. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> or, or the other way around. It's that very, very deep opposition built in, almost built into our psyches. When we project the otherness which is in ourselves, that in ourselves which is alien to us, onto another figure. Is it a kind of reaction because we're afraid of losing our identity so we demonise the other? Yes, it is, but I think it's also, um, it's also a fear of ourselves. In reality, our political conception of evil is a very opportunistic one. For many years, power-hungry tyrants like Muammar Gaddafi or Hosni Mubarak were seen as friends of the West. 
until their own people took to the streets for freedom, making it impossible to continue to sweep their crimes under the carpet in the name of diplomacy. Suddenly, favored allies became evil enemies. The figure of the evil person shifts around. You look at the history of Americans' foreign policy since the end of the Second World War, you know, the good guy one day is the bad guy the next day. I mean, it was an <laughs> utterly cynical opportunism. Terry Eagleton's new book is an important and topical one, and he shows that evil takes on many aspects, from political tool to subconscious projection. But what, in the final analysis, is evil really? Even he doesn't offer a final answer, perhaps because a single true face of evil just doesn't exist.